Hello, everybody. It is me, Pacific. Well, I want to thank Michael Laidlow for putting a link on my Facebook about Manila, the slums. I watched the whole thing in its entirety, and I could not help but get choked up. As everybody knows, I have a fascination with Asia. I have a real fascination with the Philippines and Filipinas and Filipinos and the, their life. I don't know how many views I'll get on a video like this. Most of my viewers, with all due respect, born and raised in America and haven't set foot out of this country. And Manila would have absolutely no <clears throat> attention for some of them. The problem in this country is we're so far removed from such graphic imagery, harsh reality, dire, massive amounts of poverty, the disparity, the dichotomy between what we are as Americans and what you see in some of these third world countries is so utterly shocking that people can't even bear to watch it. While a woman who refuses to use her turn signal stops in front of me and I honk and she has a complete meltdown and gets all upset and I yelled, hey idiot, use your blinker. And we look at the problems in this country and we look at the people that are so blessed not just to have food and nice houses and nice clothing and retirement and medical insurance. but to have an expensive car of such value that a person could buy a complete home in the Philippines, nicely appointed. <clears throat> I don't know where to begin. The first thing I thought of today, and Praise God, my son is talking to me, but he yutzed out on me today. And we had made plans. He was enthusiastic on the phone yesterday. I had planned to take him to the Hobbit. Planned to take him to a nice restaurant. <clears throat> and I get a text from my ex saying that he's not going to go with you today because he's with his friend. No. Not the other guy that I don't care for, but somebody else. I was just very upset. <clears throat> An hour and 40 minutes before I'm supposed to go get him, I get that text. Call my ex. She doesn't answer the phone. I called again. Doesn't answer the phone. I will not leave messages anymore. <clears throat> I sent her text saying, I need you to answer the phone and I need to hear from my son. I'm with friends, no answer phone. <laughs> really, but you can text me. Okay. So when I watch this video tonight, and thank you, Michael Laidlow, for that. I thank you. That That is sobering beyond words. It is so easy in my world <clears throat> to complain about first world problems, road drivers, coworkers that are less than stellar that I work with, And yes, my eyesight, I can see, but there's there has been a change. Even with the new glasses, this Friday, I have my physical. If I don't pass that with the eyesight piece, goodbye CDL, goodbye school bus. And I'm human. What then? I'm 49 years old. <clears throat> I don't want to do construction. I don't want to do landscaping and hard labor. And I certainly don't want to work for a bunch of smart mouth young adults who are going to boss me around in Lowe's, Home Depot, or who knows what. But when I watch this video on Manila, my first thought is, boy, <clears throat> if I was really rolling in the dough, 
I'd tell my son, you're going to the Philippines with me, and we're going to spend 21 days down there. And I want you to get a wake-up call. And if I was really feeling generous, I would take my ex-wife and say, you need to get a grip, and you need to look at this. Women have children after children after children. The Catholic Church does not believe in birth control of any kind. Not even cutting of the tubes. Pacific has wrestled with that. Is birth control a sin? Are condoms wrong? Is the pill wrong? RUB48 is. That's an abortion pill. But taking something that prevents the semen, the sperm, from fertilizing the egg, I don't know. I'm amazed at how young the girls are that get pregnant by a boyfriend who gets killed in a knife fight. In the video that I'm going to post on the link, it's disturbing. She's a stillborn at six months old. And they spend the better part of the day, this, this, this woman, this Filipino woman who tries to help people, <clears throat> who's a midwife, who helps deliver babies, who helps reach out to the community that she lives in. She herself being poor. <clears throat> Girls that don't wear bras because they can afford them. Girls that are absolutely beautiful. And here, good-looking girls, high maintenance, spoiled, rotten, self-centered. And you got all these pretty girls living in squalor. Dogs and cats running loose, garbage everywhere, trash. One old father's out there <clears throat> in a rickety boat with a very, very old-school outboard motor just to get out away so he can lay his nets and hope to catch fish. Somebody steals his outboard motor, so then he has to row. The guy's older than me. And they have nine children. When I watch this, I get teared up. I'm going, my gosh. <clears throat> but before I go further... This is not an occasion for us to feel guilt because we were born in our respective countries. But what it should do is cause us to pause and say, thank you, God, for the blessings that we really don't deserve. It's easy for Americans to look at that and go, well, their own stupid fault. They have babies and Americans take it for granted that we have education. Well, that education today is very debatable, very much anti-God. But I also see the sins of a Catholic church, <clears throat> which pulls in huge amounts of money. While they tell everybody, don't use birth control and don't do this and don't do that. And even one woman talks about the cutting of the Tube said that family planning is not in the Bible and uh, cutting God is against it. Now, we're not referencing Leviticus where it talks about cutting yourself to make marks all over yourself. I don't find it anywhere in the Bible where birth control is a sin. I do believe abortion is wrong. <laughs> And the Catholic Church doesn't lift one finger to help any of these poor families while holding this big dragnet over them that you are supposed to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. And this young lady wants the blessing of the father over her stillborn, and she's carrying a stillborn in a bag. goes to a Catholic priest's office and the lady's asking, how come it's not in a box? Why is it not in a box? Um, because <clears throat> the priest blesses it and then she's able to bury it. <clears throat> the Filipino takes the box and peels it down another inch, makes a concrete form, pours the concrete and entombs it. That's how they bury their dead. Stories of different families, different girls, and how hard it is to make a living. 
when Papa comes back with just a handful of fish, it's only enough to last a few days and he can sell some to his neighbors. Sometimes he goes four days without finding anything. And he has to pull trash and lilies out of his nets. And then his wife is peeling garlic. A tedious, arduous task. The poorest people in America don't even live like the slums in Manila. Garbage everywhere. Naked kids running around. Teenage kids standing against walls, listless. And I asked myself, if I took my son to see this in living color, would it change him? I don't know. I would be very reluctant to take my boy to a country like that. I remember what happened when I got sick over there. <clears throat> I've got a great immune system. But at night I felt like I was going to die. I don't mean to be crude. But has any of you ran liquid out of both sides of your lower regions day after day? I have. I remember even Beth. How many times you go to the toilet? Uh, as many as I need to, babe. <laughs> Whatever I caught the night of the party, it was the strangest thing. I'm sitting there in the chair, and all of a sudden my face turns white. The other people notice it. My gal, you okay? I said, oh man, I don't know. I feel nauseous. Can I go up and lay down? Yeah, 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 go, go, we take you. And I go up and lay down in the room that Beth and I stayed in while we were in Iloilo. It's 100 degrees and 100% humidity, roaring hot and sweaty. No air conditioning in the house. Windows open, no relief. No fan blowing. I laid on top of the sheets, shivering and freezing cold. I'm thinking, what is ravaging me? A neighbor lady <clears throat> from Beth's childhood, who's still the neighbor, she looked island to the core, broad shoulders, bigger build than me, very nice. But if you didn't know and you saw her first time, you might be frightened by her appearance. Not ugly, but you could tell she was strong woman. She looked like island woman. She'd come up and want to... Uh, Beth said, I brought somebody who can heal you. Heh. And she come up and she put her hand clamped down right here so hard. I, I, yeah, that hurts. No, no, it's good for you, both of them said. I said, huh, pain not good right now. I don't feel good. No, no. And then it dawned on me she's performing acupuncture. And I very politely said, I said, it's okay, la, it's okay. Why you not do what she say? She only make you well. <clears throat> Me knowing I'm in another country, the last thing I'm going to do is get into a discussion about beliefs. I wasn't about to say, I don't believe in this malarkey. And I very politely said, I said, it's okay, it's okay, I'll be, I'll be fine. I think I laid there one hour. And whatever it was that came over me left. I never threw up. The sweating stopped. And I was shivering, let me tell you. I'd never experienced it. You, you guys all talk about getting chills. Normal to get chills when you don't feel good in the winter. 
but in the hot Philippines. Wow. I resumed and went downstairs and joined the party and ended up singing that night and staying up late into the night and enjoying the customs and the celebration of a Philippine family with a water baptism and a girl who turned three years old. Two different girls. Glaze and Gel were their names. The next day we went about jeepneys, went around town, did this, did that. That night my butt was on fire and I made trip after trip to the toilet couldn't keep food down it's like what is going on surprisingly <clears throat> never once threw up but I definitely got what they call in Mexico Montezuma's revenge nobody told me don't drink the water wake up the next day we go run around that night, the same thing. It got so bad, and I don't eat oranges, I don't eat citric, because it'll give me a mouthful of sores. But going to the toilet so many times made me realize, you know what? I am craving salt, and I'm craving exceedingly sweet. And I walked down one morning, went down to the bottom of the stairs, and I said, Beth, can I have that orange? Yeah, take it. I gobbled that whole thing up. I wolfed down an entire bag of potato chips. I needed salts and sugars right now. I remember buying a Welch's grape juice in the Philippines. Bottle that big, little tiny one, three US dollars. Wow, expensive. I think it's time for me to tell my viewers that not we, we, we Americans are very ignorant of so much growing up in this culture. And though I've shed light to my viewers on the beauty of Filipino women, let me tell you, a lot of women don't live the good life. Even in the poverty slums, you can find good-looking Filipino women, sexy, gorgeous, living in dire poverty. There's so many of them. Viewers, let me give you some perspective. Go look at a map of the Philippines. I don't recall exactly, but I thought they said there's 7,000 islands. But the whole mass area isn't even as big as the United States. There's 90 million people in the Philippines. 90 million. To give you a contrast, the U.S. is 300 million. 90 million is a third of the U.S. population. Now, does everybody know why immigration is somewhat rough on them? When you have the kind of poverty you have in the Philippines, and if you made it easy for them to come here, you would probably empty half of that populace out in short order to come here. I learned from Maharani just today. I knew the Spanish had taken up residency in the Philippines and controlled them for a time. But she also told me so did the Mexicans. I did not know that. There's a lot of similarities. Though in the Philippines they don't eat tacos and burritos and enchiladas. There's a lot of similarities. Young Filipina girls getting pregnant with their boyfriend. And having miscarriage. A man and a woman having so many children that they're struggling just to feed them all. Flies everywhere. 
sanitary conditions. I I can't even I can't even fathom this. And I'm sorry to say it, but the Catholic Church and its foolishness that you got to get the priest's blessing in order to bury it and all this other stuff. The foolishness that they teach when the baby's dead, there is no more blessing. The person is either going to heaven or they're going to hell. I know a born again Christian woman that was friends with my wife and I, her husband and her. And she said she prays for the dead. And I said one night we were playing cards at the house. I said, what? I said, but Patty, that doesn't do any good. Well, I know, but I still do. I'm going to say something that's going to get me in trouble. I'm not being racist and I'm not being put down. But Catholicism proliferates in country where people are a little bit naive. The stranglehold that they have on the Philippines that a woman cannot get divorced from her husband. Filipino males will cheat on their wives. And now many women are cheating on their husbands because of the times we're living in. You can't go get a divorce. You can get an annulment, and it's very expensive. And most men and women don't get an annulment. The woman gets away from him. He goes his way, and they're considered separated. Even Mouse has two children. Most of the Filipinas that I knew over there had kids of their own back home and were earning money in Hong Kong to support them. Mouse had a violent husband. Uh, wait a minute. Boyfriend. When I look at this video, I couldn't believe and I'm guilty as charged of taking for granted so much that we have here. That we have programs to help people. That persons can still get medical care whether they can afford it or not. That I don't know anybody in the U.S. that's starving. <clears throat> I want to say something to my viewers because they need to know this. <clears throat> I, for a long time, said I would love to live in the Philippines. Can I say something to you? No, I wouldn't. It's too blasted hot there. So hot. Even Hong Kong in the summer in July. <clears throat> One of the hot months in Hong Kong. I had made it all the way till then. But it got so hot, no air conditioning, that it liquefies your food and you have the runs all the time. Some of us white people just weren't made for that kind of weather. <clears throat> and if I had the means and was rich, I would go to a place that's a little more <clears throat> tempered climate. I'd like to take half my troll viewers. I'd like to te take the teenage boys and girls on my bus if I had the means and the way and say, come on, you're coming to Manila with me and I'm going to take you on a trip. And we're not going to stay in a five-star hotel. We're going to find a family that will sponsor us that doesn't quite live in the sh slums, but close enough to it where we can take a walk and show you guys what they're living like.
that the Filipinos steal from each other, those that can't get work or don't get work, will steal, even from their own Filipino race. The sheer magnitude of the number of people in the slums and in Manila is unbelievable. Then you contrast that to the U.S. Women are becoming colder and more impersonal. They're taught by women's studies to hate us men. They're taught more and more not to have babies at all. In the Philippines, as an example, in the extreme gone out of control, and the U.S. is quickly becoming an extreme going the other way out of control. But I've noticed something, and this is just an opinion. I can't base this in fact. But when I look at the direction that our country is headed, I look at my weekly trip to Walmart and I watch the price of food inching, inching up faster in increments than I've seen in my entire life. It makes me wonder, would America become a third world country? It could. And what we Christians have to hold on to is that God says, or it actually says in his word, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging for bread. I don't mean to say this, but Catholicism is godless. People will be shocked when I say that. They said, no, they're not. They believe in God. No, they're godless. They teach people so much rot and craziness and, yes, even superstition. And they don't lift a finger to help them at all. And they hinder them from coming to true saving faith. That's just something to think about. But Manila is a case study. It really is. And if you're not moved by watching the video, it's 47 minutes long. So please try to watch it. And whether my viewers are interested in the Philippines or not, you still want to watch this because of perspective. Yes, the Filipinos talk in Tagalog, but it's printed on the screen. But the narration's done in English. I just wanted to give my viewers some perspective. And it's hard. Because water seeks its own level, and when we're in this country, the things we go through every day get on our nerves. But just watch this and get some perspective and stop and say, God, thank you that I have a full plate of food every night and clothing. I get to live in a nice place, whether I own it or live there to help with the estate, pay rent whatever, that you have the means provided to you by God. A lot of the problems that are being generated in America is because people gotten fat and sassy, and the more comfortable people are, the more petty they become. I think every American who has a well-to-do life and doesn't believe in treating people with respect, maybe they need to go over there and see what it's like and say, you know, you could be there. Anyways. Just something to think about. This is Pacific, signing off. Stay tuned to The Sexy for more controversy, light shining videos. Bye-bye.